chat, there was a time Nintendo sent VHS tapes to homes such as mine. And uh, I used to watch these. I had a bunch of them. And basically what they would do is just advertise their games. I mean, this was just before the internet was like a huge thing and also just when it started. So not started, but like America Online, you know. So um, these tapes, some I remember very, very fondly. And some I've never seen. And I figured we would just watch them and I talk about them. Now, the Donkey Kong Country one, I apparently watched for the very first Commercial Chaos. And we're just going to skip around in that one. But there's a bunch more, and I have a bonus tape as well. So, um, real quick, thanks to World of Nintendo YouTube channel for all this stuff. Alright, so this is... 1995, as you can tell by the look and the sounds. Welcome, gentlemen. Your assignment is simple. Infiltrate Nintendo's secret wow. research and development laboratories and bring back some critical information. This, of course, won't be easy. That's why Directed by Trent Reznor. And you will face the danger. We're looking for information on Yoshi's Island, Killer Instinct, and Donkey Kong Country 2. If you fail, I assure you it won't be a pretty sight. It's so serious. I will be forced to remove a vital appendage. What? <laughs> Imagine sending that out to kids. Here's the deal, Jake. Mm -hmm. Baby Mario's lost, okay? And you have to rescue him and return him to his parents in the Mushroom Kingdom. Who am I? You're Yoshi. This is Yoshi's Island. Confirmed. Yoshi. We got live action Yoshi for the first time. Oh, wait, actually, that's not true. Second time. Now, when I say serious, I mean more like. Greetings, Henry. We understand Yoshi's Island. Like the music? Yoshi's Island? Is there an echo? And the tone? <laughs> yes, Yoshi's Island. Henry, do you really need those thumbs? Get the thumbs off. Okay, all right. Yoshi has an extremely helpful pound-the-ground technique. By jumping in the air and pulling down on the control pad, Yoshi will rocket down to the ground. This will push most posts into the ground. Oh. By doing this, you can uncover hidden coins and find invisible clouds. Okay, well, we're getting course, tips this now. This technique is the key to defeating the mini-boss of World 4, Mark. Uh, Logan. good advertisement. And if you're gonna miss a jump, you may want to rocket to the ground with this technique and just catch the edge of a platform and be safe. What a great Four. game, though. If Yoshi can reach the goal of a level, I, I swear stars, maybe it's because my brain is broken, but I'm like, I see this and I'm thinking about my McDanouge bit. Score on each area in an entire world, this will open a bonus game More. And a secret hidden level. The bonus game can be played over and over in World One, <laughs> and you can collect tons of various items that will help you on your quest and make the game a lot easier from that point on. You call that a tip? We need more. Holy shit. Uh, I don't think so. Gentlemen. Cut off his thumb. Procedure seven. <laughs> what? Oh okay. god, not the okay. feet tickle. Okay. Okay. I'll tell you everything I know. One of the toughest hidden areas to find in Yoshi's wait. Island. Wait, 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 wait. Is this World Bush Machine Head? Area 1-7. I guess this was the big song at the time. I kind of have to talk over this because otherwise it's going to get like Mondo claimed. But yeah, they just. <laughs> they're pairing Bush Machine Head <laughs> with Yoshi's Island. <laughs> That's amazing. You've been very cooperative. You know, next time we won't be so nice. We'll rip every hair off your. Wow. You know, he was never seen again. When battling Jago, a wind kick will most likely result. I thought that was like a cock, but that's just. I think that's a. Uh, as well as the zygomatic bones. and consequently the intermaxillary suture. This can occur in either the tournament mode or random select mode, but not in the practice mode. I suggest practice mode. Nintendo has this room to this day. Oh, that's him. That's Claw. Yours, Mr. Lob. 
Being one of the minds behind Killer Instinct, we need you to reveal your techniques, as we fully intend to win the next tournament. Yeah, right. Why should I tell you? Gentlemen. All right. That was a nice voiceover. Mom? There he is, Mr. Game Player. What the fuck? We didn't bring you up to play games all day. We had big plans for you. You were going to go to Harvard. Now you're in Redmond. Your sister's a doctor, your brother's a banker. I think she was up for the Seinfeld role. Gamer. You weren't always like this. To play Jerry Seinfeld. look at you. Cumble slappies. Where did we go wrong? Okay, okay, I'll talk, I'll talk. Okay, so you want wow, to learn how to Penn win. Lob is an amazing actor. First thing I'm going to tell you about is slappy combos. Slappy combos are cool because most combos in Killer Instinct, you start out with like open, auto, maybe link or auto, and then a combo finisher. People become very used to seeing that pattern. Slappy combo, you start with like a medium or fierce, and then you two and one by releasing the special move off of that medium fierce. Then you can end with an end finisher. I don't know what's happening you here. You end up throwing off the competition. A good example would be like Riptor. Do like a duck pierce punch. It's kind of a weird dash, thing to uh, to do. Weak punch and like finisher. send out promo out tapes to surprise. people that maybe didn't buy the games and just give them tips. I'm taking notes. I'm writing all this down. Now I will cremate your remains with my serious go. Are you holding back on us, Mr. Lon? Are you holding back? So you want... Combos? How about I give you the super taco double humongous burrito combo? Not likely. And these are some cute pictures we took while Kitty was being potty trained. There's no holding back. Cute little toys. <laughs> Wait, what? Another good thing you can do in Killer Instinct is really wire the combo. What if that's really his mom, though? People think they know combo breakers. Nobody knows combo breakers. If you know combo breakers, no one's gonna touch you because anything they do, pow, you combo break them. More. So the idea is. Most people are going to play this open I love auto this guy. game. So if you know the combo that's starting from the open, if you know the auto double, it's very easy to break. So all you do is, example, let's take Chief Thunder. Chief Thunder's coming at me with a fierce spin axe. I Man, know he only has yeah. two choices. He can auto you can on really, punch, really can just on kick. listen to the so music and be like, oh, 1994 or 1995. The See, the first this might be DMCA double, too. I don't know. Break him. Not a problem. Always remember also. If they're doing a fierce, you break with medium. If they're doing a medium, you break with weak. If they're doing a weak, you break with fierce. More. Now you think that you know what you're doing because you have combo breakers wired. Ha! I I'm not going to remember all this. Combos. I'm going to lay some combos at you that you just plain can't break. Okay, Good game looks cool. I don't remember any of this by, by the time I get it. So you slap him, say, with, let's go back to Ripador again. He's going to slap you this time with a medium punch. And he's going to go straight to the medium dash. And let's pick something that can't be broken. Like, I'll go for a flame, and then a slap. Just slap. The slap knocks you up in the air, and then I can slap the shit out of him. I just hit you with six hits that you cannot break. Buy, buy Killer Instinct and slap the shit out of a dinosaur. Jago rules. Riptor rules. Jago rules. Jago sucks big time. I thought he was going to say, Jago sucks the big dick. Welcome to the biggest show on earth. Hurry, 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 ladies and gentlemen and children. I'm your ringmaster, and I promise you the greatest time of your life. Okay, now this I need tips for. <laughs> How did you guys get in here? That's not important. What is important is what, what you is here? Donkey Kong What are these Kong? rooms? I'm not telling you jack. You can kill me and I still wouldn't talk. Holy Thank shit. Thank you for that option. Wait, that doesn't, huh? But my associates and I would prefer to send you on a long vacation. What kind of line is oh, that? yeah, go ahead. Nothing's gonna make me talk. Not even these three suits. They're literally men in black. This is we would like to play. This is we would like to pay. Gentlemen, have a seat. There are several hooks, barrels, and other items that are invisible throughout the game. To find them, look for single bananas sitting by themselves. Okay, dude's a better actor than he is a VO. And I happen to think that her helicopter hair spin is the most awesome move in her arsenal. Some hidden tricks can only be found with the help of your animal friends. For example, in the area of Pirate Panic, look for a single banana sitting by itself. You can use your That was a suspicious to banana, to be fair. Hidden bonus level. How about a hot tip? Hmm? Sure, why not? This guy's rich. In the first two areas of the game, there are shortcut barrels that take you directly to the end of the level. 
Finding them will make blazing through the first part of the game a cinch. <laughs> Thank you. A sin. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh yes, there's definitely more. Let's check out some upcoming okay. games. Okay. Oh, upcoming Nintendo. games now. Okay. And now with 32 megs of rendered graphics and stunning 3D scenes and three-quarter perspectives, by Mario RPG is one of the most advanced video games ever. Conceived. Chat, you heard her. 32 megs. I can't wait Shut up, to Meg. See a Goomba in ACM. Well, you know Square developed it. Oh, they're the best. <laughs> they did Final Fantasy. So you know Mario RPG <laughs> isn't going to suck. <laughs> this what? is excellent, gentlemen. Mario's oh, first great RPG. acting. We now live in a post-RPG Mario RPG. remake. I could play this for hours. Crazy. And check out these characters. I've never seen some of these guys before. You, you, no, you saw some of them. This of paratrooper. On my left butt cheek. Butt cheek? Whoa, they move in every direction. You tell me. Tell me about that stuff, disembodied voice. Look at those graphics. Wow. The drum loop is helping. I'm so thrilled. <laughs> I think I might spare your lives. Cold oh. fish. Oh. Sushi. Yeah. Lots of people tell me I remind them of the kid. I don't know what's so special about him. I hit 65 home runs in 94. Fly ball. Finally, exciting baseball I can control. <laughs> Nintendo's new Major League Baseball presents Ken Griffey. Chat, Jr. he's, he's doing the line reading like oh, McDonough. There's tons of play modes. I can play a full season, a World Series, an all-star game. I can play anything I want. 32 like megs. Like you saw it. Griffey makes it look a lot harder than it is. This game gives me stats up the wazoo. And if I don't like how these players are performing... What if you don't I want stats trade. in your wazoo? Set my own lineups, even do two-player head-to-head action. My favorite. And no one, absolutely no one's going on strike. Oh. I'll be there oh, shit. Was that a timely joke for the time? I don't remember. Video game. Super NES Baseball. Starring Rodney Kageyama. You've done an exemplary job, gentlemen. Now, your next assignment won't be so easy. It's information no one absolutely Next assignment no one is to film the closer video for Nine Inch Nails. Smuggled video from the Shoshenkai show in Japan. Look at this device. Get it, and don't let it out of your sight. Get it. Oh no, Virtual Boy? Does this uh, event still exist, chat? No. Oh, that was Space World, or was it? This NU64 better be hot. Got those tickets? NU64. We're supposed to have them. Oh, we're gonna get busted, dude. We're not. Just be smooth, relax. Just walk around. Don't look at anybody. Just be calm. Just it was also perfect. it was Nintendo Ultra 64. Yeah. Hey, she's picking a nose. Uh oh. Hey, she's got a gun. Hey, she's got a gun. Got a gun. Oh, what? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's see if this guy has the NU64 tape. Oh, I don't have a video tape. Go out, Ray. Oh man. You got the tape? I'd like to tell you where the secret video tape is. But Mario would be really upset. He asked Mr. Big. Christopher! Christopher! I don't have the videotape. Please, just go away. I don't have the videotape. I remember this guy. You'll have to wait. Hey, you want the tape? Go over there, make a left, then make a right, then make another left, then go down. Wild to think this was 30 years ago. And behind curtain number two, the tape. Chat, I can't believe it. We're, we're seeing the future. And it's playing future music. What do I do with the controller? Where Do I sit on it? It's do three people time. sit on it?
Oh, there was a beta thwomp. It's like B3313. I like when the music goes, ha ha! Oh man, look, Zelda 64. All right, Shit. We got the tape. Let's get out of here. You got the keys? You have the keys. Ah. Thank you, gentlemen, for a successful mission. We have all we need. We're out of here. We're dust, vapor, a memory, history. We're out. Gone. Adios. Later. Play it loud. Play it raw. Music. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. There's got to be a mention of Bush, right? I guess we play the game, does this get claimed? Yeah, there it is. There it is. I wonder if that's, like, oh shit, No Doubt was a part of this? It's timely. Just, yeah. I thought that said Rotten 12. So much flashing and like, just, just movement. So much movement and crust. So yeah, that one was called The Invasion of Nintendo, I believe. Yeah, The, the Invasion of Nintendo. That one's from 1995. Um, I didn't have that one. I did have the Donkey Kong Country one, but that one, I watched already so like i said we'll save that for the end and i'll skip around but here's yoshi's island this is just a tape devoted to yoshi's island also from 95 i don't know how different this is going to be but so that's the channel world of nintendo okay this next video also released in 1995 is specific to one game and that's yoshi's island it says a magical tour of yoshi's island Lets you leap. So I'm going to be skipping ahead. If you want to watch this stuff, there's a playlist for it and the World of Nintendo channel. This is from 10 years ago, by the way. But this person goes in detail about like what's on the tapes and everything and then shows the tapes. So this is a cool channel as far as I can tell. I, I haven't seen much of it up until now, but let's get and going. And now for your eyes only, a journey through Yoshi's Island. Do you find yourself unchallenged? Hey, hey. Been there. Do you feel this like dude something is missing from was in the DKC life? video. Got the high score on that one. Could it be that you're not getting enough Mario in your diet? Introducing the game you've been waiting four long years to play. Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. Available only on I mean, Super NES. A game like you've never played before. You've never all played enemies, before. New levels. And oh yeah, this time you play Yoshi. You play Yoshi. Is that a talk box? Is that a yeah, I think that's talk box. K Mac has kidnapped baby Luigi. Baby Mario escapes K Mac's clutches and falls onto Yoshi's back. Use I never really to considered Yoshi's this to be a Mario, a Mario game. Luigi. Journey safely through Yoshi's Island to return them to their parents in the Mushroom Kingdom. It's look, it's a strategic title. Hold on, big boy. Uh, where am I? Well, you've entered the world of Nintendo. What am I doing here? In order to learn all the secrets about this game, you're going to have to journey through Yoshi's Island. So, uh, oh, man. Which way do I go? You're going to you, go that way. You're going to go to the Pearl Jam show. They're, they're on at 8. No! I am completely lost. Well, we can get around to that, Josh, but first I think you need to learn some more about Yoshi's Island. Wait, is this so Ken Lobb again? So different, though. You think you can keep a secret? I can keep a secret. Okay, Man, I didn't realize Ken Lobb was fish. as... Like we have backgrounds that wave where front facing line scrolling vertically and horizontally different scrolls of the background. Okay, then you have scaling where we do things like you'll have a little tiny enemy in the background and you're thinking that guy's way back there. I don't have to worry about him. You know, so you're cruising along all of a sudden he just leaps out of the background. Boom! And we have some other effects in the game. Like you'll be Chat, did Ken Lobb have anything to do with this? Wasn't he working at Rare? And just squish you flat like a pancake. Just boom! Pancake. Now that's unbelievable. Now you gotta tell me real quick about the graphics. The graphics of the game are cool. Yeah. When we made Yoshi's Island, oh, he was NOA. Look. Gotcha. My you know, bad. So they, they do something that almost looked like a sketch. They're kind of like hand drawn. I think that was the look that, that they were going for when they designed Those Yoshi's graphics, Island. by the way, 
for their time were incredible. They like when I rented this game, they actually did blow me away. Clouds are like you know swimming. And I love the hand drawn style to this day. I think it's the best looking Super Nintendo game outside of like three or four. Yeah, that's right. But in general, you're morphing into things in Yoshi's Island, so you can find hidden areas and secret things, so that you can finish the game perfectly. Oh man, I want to replay Yoshi's Islands now. Tell me about this game. No, there's not much I can tell you anymore. You're gonna have to figure out the rest on your own. You, bro, you have to what go to the Pearl doing? Jam concert. We've been playing a lot of Yoshi's Island lately. What's Eddie Vedder is showing you tips on stage. Down. Well, you see, Josh, in this game, you get these red, blue, and green watermelons that give you these different abilities. With the red ones, what you do is you take that and you get fire, and then you can uh -huh. burn them. Yeah. Hey, what's Yoshi, the two funky arrows? Okay, since I'm tinted, Yoshi likes to spit his watermelon out. Here, I'll show you how to use those arrows. Okay. Um, you use these arrows by tossing the eggs into them, and you can bounce them off the walls. Cool, so like a ricochet? Cool. Exactly, or a bank. Bada wow. bing! Okay, so how many different kinds of eggs we got? <laughs> well, let's see, we've got red. Red. We yeah, the vibe green, of this is a little green. different than the treehouse presentations of modern day. Yellow eggs can help you get stars. Stars. Slightly stars different. Stars pretty much, they help you get... Uh, Still goofy, though. Now, you got snow, you got water. Are those pretty much the, the levels the same? There's six worlds in the game with, with eight levels in each. And if you can get all the things you need to get a bonus, you can open up a hidden world. Wow. And another bonus game. Wow. So there's about ten things for each world. So there's over 60 levels. You gotta get um, 30 that dude stars. Looks and like he just got out of high school. Five flowers. Collect them, why? Um, to get the 100 points, which will get you the bonus. But the older you get, chat, the more you, you, you know, you're looking at people, you're like, oh god. Um, there's like I'm over old. In the game. I pretty much <laughs> get rid of them really fast anyway, though. I wonder how many oh, of these people man, still the work at Nintendo. Right this is one of the coolest parts in the game. This is one of the big bosses that do the morphing stuff. Uh huh. Cool thing about this is, is he's like a jelly substance, and you've got to use the eggs to rip a path to the middle of him. I got oh! it! Oh! Right on the edge. So cute. I like that we're actually getting some some of the music from the game in this tape. Alright, back to guitar. Who are you guys? And and the video game testers. And what are you doing, Was brother? it this dark? Into the game, morphing into a submarine. It where are they? Where is this? Just did it. Shoot, no, what are those? Those little torpedoes. Little torpedoes when they just find the bad guys? You got it. And what did you just jump on there? Um, that's a little box where you hit it. It looks like they're at a, a video game store with and the lights you off. Find extra items that way, too. Wow. So you, what do we got going on? Well, I'm going to shoot the eggs at him. You can see, he gets a little mad. That's it. There you go. Nice. Ah, yeah, that's right. That's Good right. shot. But check this out. You're on Dude a Dude loves his egg jokes. That is that, what is it? Been there. Done that. Try this. Wow. Lower them FPS. October, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. Only Play it Super raw. NES. Yeah, I like that one. That one was good because it's it's like, you know, when I was younger, I was getting these tapes. I'm like, wow, how does Nintendo afford to send these tapes out? And I kept them for years. I don't know if I still have them, but I have like four of them, four or five. And then I got a GoldenEye dossier, which I loved. It was like, I kept that shit in pristine condition. And it was just like um, like a Secret Service dossier of like GoldenEye weapons and shit. But, um, and like levels and all that. It was a good promo, but this one, it's like seven minutes, right? Seven and a half minutes. And it doesn't, and not even actually less because the, the thing starts about a minute and a half in. So this is like a six minute promo. And um, I think the game sells itself, honestly. So this one is the N64 one. Change the system is their campaign they were doing for this one. So obviously this one's 1996. It's going to be jarring to go back to the Donkey Kong Country one at the end. But I had this tape. Um, it's To me, chat, one of the most weird things is that um, the Stormtrooper was a major part of the Nintendo 64 like library. Like it was just Mario, Pilot Wings, and Stormtrooper. Also, wasn't the date 
delayed to November. Like that September 29 date is is fake, right? I think it was was it real? Was it actually 90s? I don't know. I forget now when that came out when the N64 came out in America, but um yeah, it was just um Pilot Wings Mario and then later you got Star Star Fox, well uh Star Wars rather and a couple other things like Wayne Gretzky's 3D hockey. On June 23rd, 1996, N64 was released in Japan. The results were nothing less than phenomenal. Within hours, over 500,000 systems cleared the shelves. Is that good for these days? Whoa. Oh god, epilepsy warning. I had no idea. But you know what? Yeah, with a lot of these tapes, they didn't give a shit. They didn't know better. It was September 29. I thought it was November, but yeah, September 29. On September 29, N64, N64 was a flop in Japan. The Saturn America. outsold it. The system is about to change. But before it does, we decided to invite three of the best gamers in the country to put it to the test. This is N64. Billy Mitchell? Allegedly? But well, wait, wait, wait. Why do we need the best gamers to show off <laughs> the N64? <laughs> the best gamer! That's him! What? There's another best gamer. Game face. Unbeatable. <laughs> it's like the wizard. These are like babbies. Man, those hoodies. I wonder if they're actually real, like, good gamers, or just N64. actors. The driving force in the next generation of video games. With 64-bit technology... How old were they? Because they must have been... No they're probably, like, my match. age or 40 at this time. Three-dimensional graphic interpretations, anti-aliasing for crisp graphics, and too many other things that are just going to blow. Anti-aliasing chat. Welcome to N64. My eyes can't handle the N64. Actually, my eyes can't handle the editing. Greetings, gentlemen. Your journey begins this way. From this way, we go that way. Yo, what is this? Yo, it's kind of dark in here. Okay. Hey guys, how you doing? I like so, that they're uh... standing here to find out about the Nintendo 64. Oh, it's Ken Lob again. <laughs> there he is. Um, yeah, they're they're putting like special effects Nintendo on the TVs 64, to make sure the footage that, pops. To be the world's first 64-bit hardware. Now I could go on and on about oh, the god, stuff, the editing. But I think it's easier for me to explain that as I show you the game. Hello. So let me jump into the game. You notice that Mario's standing in this huge field outside of a big castle. Now if I take the control stick and I just move it a little bit, you notice that Mario starts to tiptoe. I move a little bit farther, Mario start this kind of Chat, you don't ride. understand and how fucking cool this was. Sprint. I first Look experienced this at a Toys R Us, and it blew my mind. Control. 360. Now wow, in unison they said that. That's where most of the levels are. Go, little man, go. <laughs> What kind of skills you have, little man? Now that I'm inside, I'm going to show you a level. I'd like to show you some of the cool things that Mario can do. Now, I'm sure you've seen traditional Mario they would games. You know that Mario can do in things in the streamer like environment anyway. chat. Now Mario's Maybe they are stunts. streamers. Check out Mario, man, doing those backflips. I push the Z and then push jump. Oh. Mario does a layout double backflip. Yeah. Awesome. If I like run along, push Z, jump. Whoa, Mario jumps a mile. Even Ken Lobb is oh like acting God, very fine. cool right now. I can now. get Mario to do things climbing trees. I can get Mario to do things by hanging on ledges. I can do a ton of stuff with Mario. Oh, did you see that? Yo, you see the way he went to that door? I'm kidding. Here we go. I, wow. Yeah, he went to that door all right, and he opened it. See that? This is good. It's some yeah. gameplay. It's some music. Up. Oh, that. Never mind. And now nondescript music. The control stick is cool. It actually allows full 360 degree control. 
Okay, so I'm gonna cruise along here and jump into this. That was real room. chat. That research room, they did that. Hey. They paid him in hot dogs that? and bananas. Actually, it was pretty hard. We had a bunch of R&D guys with busted heads. <laughs> he was not. It's true. It's, he's not lying. This level's kind of cool because there's actually there's swimming levels in the game. There's snow levels. There's other stuff. This level actually involves swimming as well as kind of some traditional platform stuff. However, now it's all happening in a 3D world. That's awesome. <laughs> they cut him off. He didn't even get a chance to say awesome fully. That's awesome. That's a- That's awesome! This music so sounds more like perfect dark There's music to me. There's more I'd like to show you in the game before we move on to the other products. And that's... Bowser. I feel like I had this tape, and I'm almost positive I did. But I don't think I watched this nearly as much as I watched the um, Star Fox one. But this kind of shows you how to defeat Bowser. So when you get the game, it's not even like, you know, a surprise. What was that editing? Wait, 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 what, what? That was baffling editing. Hang on. I mean, it's not a spoiler, it's just like, now you know how to defeat Bowser, kinda. They didn't even finish saying- they, they didn't even say words. This is so cool! Give him a toss, man, he ain't nothing. That was recorded in a VO booth. Anyway, I think I can go on for about the next 20 hours telling you about Mario 64, but I think it's time we move on to Armand, who's going to show you pilot wings. To be fair, that is a very impressive sequence, like, especially when the camera zooms out. Like, when you throw Bowser off the edge. That's, like, fucking awesome. Now that you just finished playing Mario and done a crash course in Techno Babble 101, it's time to talk fun. Isn't this the guy from before? Was really video games for a living. Wings is that you get to deal with more Me than too. just airplanes. You've got hang gliders, you've got rocket packs, and you've got gyrocopters. That's the most unique flight simulator. Yeah, he's rich now. Why does he need flight. this money? When you're playing the game, you feel like that you're actually in the game. For example, in this hang glider level, there's going to be some range you got to fly. God damn it, just show us the game. Stop showing us the kids. I don't want to see them. Close, okay? Now, when you go through all the rings, make sure that you pull the joystick down to swoop your plane upward. Oh, show us like the game. Like no! No! The editing, when you stop! When for the landing, you want to use your A button, or commonly known as the blue button. Use it to slow down speed if you're going too fast. Come in for the landing, and it's an A You plus. need to edit your next video no, this in this unreal. style. Who's up for the task? Just do a highlight video of, of me, uh, eating snacks. And it's just, like, intense editing, filmed in some, like, abandoned industry sector with weird lighting and goo. Always goo. Someone just said people are worried about TikTok. You know what? It's real easy to be old man yells at Cloud, but to be fair, you, you kind of have a point. I don't even know how to, like, defend against that shit. When you get to the point two, you think you're actually good at this game? Haha, <laughs> try this. Try getting at least a silver or gold medal in all three events, and you're gonna open your way up into some new, hidden levels. Like the Cannonball stage. One thing that's really cool about the Cannonball is that you can use the R button to change your camera angle, and that way you get a true feeling of, of yourself being in a real-time 3D environment. Really? Oh. The Jungle Hopper. Haha, <laughs> that's one of my favorites. In this area, the object is to <laughs> jump across That's the one of my center. favorites. <laughs> now, you want to use your analog joystick once again to make sure that you get the longest jump possible. You jump over this building here, and then you go around the bend and try to find the best way to get to the action. This is my least played, um... <laughs> <laughs> that was a blooper they just kept in. To play. Shadows of the Empire. Not a launch title, but I loved this game. And it, oh, I can't say, you can't listen to Star Wars music. I'm sorry, chat. I would love to. 
but this shit gets mega claimed. You guys are here to see Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. Oh, it's the high schooler again. Yes, I'll uh, cut to the chase and get right to the game, which is my favorite part. One of the really unique things about Star Wars. Yeah, this, Wars this is that game's a little hard to play these days. This this, this would get a great remake. Well, it, it could use one. The ice world. You're a guy in a corridor in a maze type level. There he is. You actually fly in a spaceship. You, you ride a swoop bike, which is kind of like a big speeder bike across the land. And one of the coolest parts in the game that I there really go. like is these big walker guys. Please show us scenes of people reacting and like two FPS, please. This is too much gameplay. We got to do some editing. Dude just shot another snow speeder. The lasers in this game look like solid, like, um, what, like poles. I didn't care when I was growing up. I was like, this, the graphics are amazing. But seeing them now, they just look like poles. Like rebar. You can actually Twizzlers. fly around them and wrap them up with a tow hitch. And you can circle them just like in the movie. And then you can trip them up. I love that part. Yeah, I, I played the fuck out of this game. And especially that stage. That was a great stage. The world is in real 3D. So I can look around what, what, and what was that? I want. But I can also aim and shoot up at enemies that are high, low. I can strafe and run and shoot in different directions. You're out there, Henry. I can jump over objects. I can actually duck and fire at some of the stormtroopers. And, and yet I the controls are the worst part of this game. Kill these, these big ice monsters. Wampus, dude. Come on. Okay, this is the flying over the Star Destroyer. And here you actually can zoom in to the cockpit. In every level, there's different views. You can zoom in and out. You it's can a watch cool the level. guy from a third person view, or you can actually watch from a first person view. The problem with this game is it, it tried to do too many things. Asteroids. As you can see, the explosions here. And succeeded at a couple. Level. Whoa! I just love that part. Good. <laughs> Good. It's a swoop bike level. See, I'm chasing this gang inside the town. Did that dude have a See big head, or was he wearing a big hat? I always wondered I about that. I zoom out and look in a third-person view. Yeah, you see all the walls. I gotta try and bump them and stop them from getting to loot. I really like how fast this level moves. Uh, probably one of the worst levels in the game. You're inside the narrow uh, confines of the town, but you get out later on and you actually get out onto the desert and you go over the Sarlacc pits and you have to do the jumps and go through the canyon. Insane. Yeah, a yeah, little too insane. I want look at things. I can um, search the walls and stuff and find hidden items. Mm -hmm. Chad, I kind of want to stream this game one day. I don't think I've ever streamed it. God, I, again, this well, would have such a good remake. Whoa, those are Maybe. I'm just saying it needs one is what I'm trying to say. It'd be so, so it's beautiful. More? There's like two more games. This was a while off though, wasn't it? And 64 now. Yeah. It's early GoldenEye footage. Body Harvest. It's another great game that, uh, you know, had some problems. I tried streaming it a couple years ago and I had to stop like halfway through because the emulator made it really uh, shitty. Shittier? kind of stopped working properly. But Body Harvest was good. You get one second of footage, that's it. One second and you will be happy. It's early Star Fox 64, different UI. I had Wayne Gretzky 3D Hockey and I didn't even fucking play very much of it. I just fought. I just did the fights. On September 29th, N64 will be released in limited quantities. You know the date. You know the system. You know what to do. You don't want to wait. All right. I feel like I'm being brainwashed. Change the system. Oh, God. Bob Mold? Really? Huh.
yeah well you get the idea again presented by nintendo power but um yeah this this tape was wait what's this You still want more? <laughs> Chat, there was a hidden feature at the end of the tape. That's actually kind of awesome. <laughs> and it ends with an explosion. Someone just said, actually, lobotomy noises. Speaking of Star Wars, chat, I'm telling you, Lobot is not just robot with an L. Lobot is short for lobotomy. Now, that's just a theory. I don't know how true it is. But the dude's brain is weird, and he's got, like, a thing, and he can be activated. I don't know. I just feel like maybe that's right. Anyway, there's things I liked about that tape, but watching it now, I'm sure when I watched it as a kid i was like oh my god i can't wait but watching it now it just makes me like feel like i have brain shavings so a little too much but still the n64 is was uh like the perfect system i mean okay so i was the perfect age for it so the hype was real and it was a massive generational leap we kind of don't have that now like yeah graphics are getting better and there's like new ways to play some games and VR and all that. And, and that's cool. But, you know, as like a, an 11 year old. Seeing games go from Super Nintendo to N64. It was um, it was mind blowing. And that made me a gamer for life. This tape, however, I think is the best one they ever did. And some of you may actually. May remember this and know that this influenced a fox in space. But this is the one I watched over and over and over again. I could not wait for Star Fox 64. I was so, I was so hyped for this game and it fucking delivered. But this tape, I wore out. Your presentation from Nintendo Power. Are you, uh, Bab? I like how much of this tape has been ingrained in people's fucking collective landed. memories. I repeat, the eagle has landed. I'm on him. Hey, buddy. You I might have watched this on stream at some point in the past, but hey, happy to do so again. <laughs> What's this about? Quiet, bit boy. We'll ask the questions around here. Bit boy? Do you uh, have to talk into that thing? Word on the street is you got a new Nintendo 64 game coming out. Could you be a little more specific? I can almost. We got a lot of new games coming out. Remember the dialogue. <laughs> Jesus. Star Fox 64. Oh. Test pilot boy. You want to know about Star Fox 64, eh? Uh, yeah, I'm. Quick aside. You know that console war shit that we've talked about on stream that we all have seen? This tape didn't help. You'd better tell us all you know. All you know. Or else. Or else what? <sighs> or else. Plumber boy. The boy here. Gets it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys doing with me? <laughs> no. Leave Mario out of this. <laughs> Start talking. talking. Okay. Okay. You've made your point. <sighs> I wonder if he's supposed to be like a top cruise Star Fox 64 kind of is actor. the highly advanced combat game for the Nintendo 64. The Fox team includes Fox McCloud and his wingmen. Peppy Hair. Slippy Toad and Falco Lombardi. Oh man. The team They're is fucking sent talking on animals. to destroy what? Andros, the mad scientist who declared war on the entire Lilat system. This sounds like a fun bunch, but what do these guys drive? <laughs> yeah, some beat up B-52. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Why is he B-52? Why is he from Wisconsin? In Star Wisconsin? Fox 64, there are three vehicles for missions. For air battles, you've got the R-Wing. Check this out. This vehicle comes with all the latest cool moves. You can do barrel rolls, make U-turns. It can even do Still sick calls. guitar riffs. And you can lock onto your enemies before blowing them away. And for battles on land, you've got the Landmaster tank. A totally brand new vehicle that hovers and rolls over enemy obstacles. Then, for water-based fighting, you've got this submarine. Yeah, submarine was all right. It, it was fine. I'm glad it was only one level. This baby fire Landmaster was cool. That light up the dark areas for better vision before taking out the enemy in front of you. Probably my least favorite stage in the game. Listen to the real-time dialogue. You're not getting away that easy. I just played Star Fox 64 randomized. And it was a lot weirder than this. feel like you're part of the game, doesn't it? Wow. This really is the coolest game out there. You see? I told you. <laughs> you guys, you don't know the half of it. What? There's more? Well, yeah, but, but Bob would kill me if I told you. Are you where, uh, Bob? Well, we'll just have to get this Bob guy to tell us himself. Pizza for Bob. Are you, uh, Bob? Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, I didn't order any pizza. Oh, gosh. Mmm! Look at good pizza! Peter, glad you could join us. <laughs> Bob, your test fighter pilot just spilled his guts about Star Fox 64. Peter, you didn't tell him about the Rumble Pack. Oh no, did the you? Rumble Pack. No. Bob, you just did. <laughs> I did. You did. Spill it, big boy. Make me with pleasure. They put like electrical clamps on Mario's nipples. <laughs> Look at your little plumber boy now. What oh right, doing? right, not the nipples. That's enough. That's enough. All right. Someone just said this feels like a this prono. It's a promo, not Rumble a porno. Pack. The big reason why Star Fox 64 the fucking is, later. is the coolest cinematic gaming experience there is. It's designed with a force feedback device that lets players feel the game. Yeah, it's, you can second. feel it. It's promography. You're telling me that this rumble pack actually lets players feel the game? <laughs> but, like you're the actually best acting. in the cockpit, flying and fighting? It's impossible. Nuh-uh. Yeah. Hook it up. I want to feel this myself. You're very near. The rumble pack lets you feel different degrees. You're very near. Like when you turbo boost or you shoot a bomb. You're very near. Feeds back a slight turbulent vibration. You're very near. You're very near. Right. Sorry. And when you get hit by enemy fire, you feel even more of a vibration. <laughs> cool. What's even cooler is when you crash your vehicle, that's when you really <clears throat> feel <clears throat> the vibration. This is incredible. <laughs> well, what do you say, guys? You into a little multiplayer action? Let's, Let's get, get ready to rumble. rumble. Gentlemen, welcome to versus mode. Up to four players at once. See that? Each player has his own quadrant on the screen, and there are three game modes. This is fantastic. <laughs> now, can you play this on Sega Saturn? Nope. Only on Nintendo 64. I mean, 64. Sega Saturn had Panzer Dragoon. Oh, PlayStation. Can you play this game on that system? Nope. Something. Only on Nintendo 64. <laughs> Oh, and did Peter tell you? Star Fox 64 is just one of the cool games we See, have Chet, a good game can bring everyone together. <laughs> you mean there's more? <laughs> yep. Check this out.
I liked these. Uh, these were like just enough to let me know what was going on. These sizzle reels, like I didn't, um, I didn't buy Mischief Maker. I didn't buy any of these games actually. I didn't buy Yoshi's Story, Mischief Makers, or this one. But it was nice to know they existed and see them in motion. That Ken Griffey was was a monster, just a powerhouse in the '90s. Chat. Bops and Dugnut was in that one too. Yeah. This I did have, Arrow Fighters Assault. This is another kind of like underrated N64 game. Had some uh, frame rate issues, but cool game nonetheless. Soccer! We got so much soccer, but so little airplane game. Man, that is one killer lineup. And so little Boy, Zelda. Are we in big trouble? <laughs> we just can't beat you guys. Yeah? Well, as much as we'd love to stick around here and keep playing with you guys, we gotta go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way. Gotta go back to Zelda and stop the this? tape. What's that? That's the Star Fox 64 Player's Guide. It teaches you everything you need to know about the game. Let me see that. You can buy it at the store. Or, if you want more gaming information, check us out on the web at starfox64.com. Thanks for the pizza, guys. Let's see if that's still up. See you later, nope. boys. <laughs> Someone's gonna buy that and have it redirect to my Twitch channel. I'm kidding, don't do that. I'm kidding, don't do that. Probably, like, prohibitively expensive. Note that the N64 exploded in the previous tape, and this one, it comes together. So... So that was, um... That was that tape. Now, some of you may be aware of this, but... Uh, the, the cartoon, the web cartoon, Fox in Space... Did uh, a parody, not a parody, like an homage to that tape. And my role was this guy. Yes, Beltino Toad. Shift right about now. Hey, buddy. Yeah. You got the time? Yeah, sure. That guy. Hey, aren't you the. I can't feel my face. Oh. With a rubber ball? They'll be picking it out of the wall behind you if you. Where, where the hell the is the, the scene that directly. Best. Ah, I can't find it specifically you know right now, great. chat, but it. Tell them about the heat diffuser, no. did you? It is. No, Rob. You just did. <laughs> I did. You did. Spill it. Oh dear. Oh. Oh. Oh, I wish you would. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. That was good. It's a really good show if you're interested at all in Star Fox, like fan animation that actually expands the story. And uh, I mean, it's you know, it's fr it's from a fan. It's a uh, Fred Frederick Fox, but it's good. It's really fun, and I was happy to be a part of it. But I just wanted to point that out because that tape lives on there's a famous tape this is a tape i had too so this one is um like the star fox six diddy kong racing i have no memory of this tape whatsoever very unlike the star fox one i don't know what we're about to watch. First on the scene, first with the news, last in the journalist's But I like that they're doing little skits and this stuff. This is Hot Topic. Tonight, we uncover the real story surrounding Diddy Kong's latest adventure with never-before-seen footage obtained from Nintendo insiders. Now, here's your host, Trent Tillman. Oh, I'm Trent Tillman. 
Trent the Tillman. Well, I was gonna. Diddy Kong have been a mystery. One of these guys is gonna end up being like a fucking famous actor, like right now. Like I wouldn't be surprised if we see Ryan Gosling show up in just a minute. Until now, to get the story, we sent world famous adventurer and thrill seeker Dirk Monahan to catch up with the elusive chimp. Trent now, Dirk and Dirk has run with the bulls of Pamplona and braved the raging waters of the Amazon in nothing more than an inner tube. He eats danger with a spoon, wipes his chin, and asks for seconds. Dirk, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, Dirk, you were the first He's fine. human to experience the Diddy Kong adventure. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And how did you do? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't think you could break that. Yeah. What exactly yeah. happened? Cock injured? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you were trying to pick up a balloon, but you were sideswiped by a squirrel, hit an oil slick, and smashed into the hind leg of a brontosaurus? Dirk, was Diddy a part of this? <laughs> Tragic. Oh Let's my god, they killed Kenny. Our chief correspondent, Dent Chassis. Dent? Trent. Dent, Dent? as Dirk discovered, it seems we are dealing with something and Dirk. drastically different. That's right, Trent. We believe Dirk was involved in what's called the adventure mode. This is the <laughs> Dent the chassis. Of Here's what we know so far. That's a great name. This realm pits you against a number of challenges. Make your way by collecting golden balloons. Vinny, did you write this? I did. Four areas. Dino Domain, I was Sherbet 12, Island, but I wrote this. Mountain, and Dragon Forest. Once inside, you'll explore the worlds and race the boss of each one. If successful, you'll take the silver Squelm coin challenge. is the next name that'll show up. And you're one step closer to the ultimate battle with Wizpin. Pig. This Trent is no cakewalk. Let's go live to our rookie reporter Frank Fontaine. How is this with room? Breaking news, Frank. Frank. Yes, Trent. We have just obtained this ultra super secret press release from Nintendo. Wait, wasn't this? It appeared that Diddy Kong will also the be Pearl Jam guy from earlier. In this adventure, specifically hovercraft. That's right, hovercraft and planes will also be available. This is racing like we've never Maybe seen Maybe it's before, not. Trent. I'm not sure. Even head-to-head -head and versus mode, players can race different combinations of vehicles. Plane versus cart, cart versus hovercraft, hovercraft versus cart, plane versus plane, cart versus cart. At least the editing is like... <laughs> it's weird, okay, but the editing Frank. isn't like we'll giving right me a conniption. After these messages. Don't miss Trent Tillman's Sunday night special report, Brush with the Monkey. What do you remember about the incident? I don't know. There was, there was a dinosaur, some kind of cave. Then he hit me with a heat-seeking missile. He showed okay. no mercy, man. Brush with the monkey. Okay. A hot topic special report, Sunday at 8. Welcome I can't back. believe they got Grey Leno. What could have caused this seemingly docile chimp to adopt such reckless behavior? Take the case of Sheila Weston, Diddy's sweetheart for the past four years. Theirs was a storybook romance told in the tabloids and talk shows. But sadly, and suddenly, it came to an end. I was in the kitchen. I had just made what a banana year does this exist in? It was his favorite. He said he was going out to look at a hovercraft, and he never came back. I think he felt like he needed something more. It's like the sixties, seventies, nineties, all at once. I miss my monkey. Oh boy, Frank, what's the scene out there? Plane versus plane, hovercraft versus cart, cart versus plane, hovercraft versus cart. Let's check in with Candy Krause in the hot tub. I remember that. K four four three jetpack, Candy. What can you see? Well, Trent, my gosh, it's much higher than I thought. <laughs> We're looking at over 20 what? different courses here with all types of terrain. It's really, really dangerous down there. It's quite difficult to see how anyone could survive something like this. There you go. Courses with mountains, canyons, tunnels, volcanoes, lagoons. The list goes on. The adventure mode allows you to earn the right to race the courses here in the tracks mode. Players can race against another opponent or in actual time trials. Speaking of time, Trent. I'm sorry, I'm not understanding what you're saying, and I own this game. Good question. Daddy. I just want to see the footage. There are Others believed to be involved in Diddy's adventure. Banjo the bear, crunch the alligator, conquer the squirrel, timber the tiger, bumper the badger, tip top the turtle. I'm sorry, who? Pipsy the mouse. Who are these Let's people? Get an update from Dent Chassis. Early reports indicate an arsenal of weapons is being unleashed. Homing missiles, multi-shot missiles, oil spills, mines. In some cases, bubbles are even used. Players may collect shields to protect themselves, but we've heard that high-powered magnets like this one have already been spotted. It seems the tensions are already running high among the participants. 
This bag of acorns was found shoved into the exhaust oh, system man. of plane. Right now, all fingers are being pointed squarely at Conker. That's cool well, that they're in their 60s. The as soon as we have like, more information love on shack. this story. <clears throat> Let's check back in with Frank Fontaine. Yep, there's okay, a memory unlock. Frank. Hot Topic has been granted an exclusive interview with two Nintendo insiders with Wait, some hot, startling information concerning Diddy Kong Racing. There's something else, something deeper. It's the Rumble Pack. It lets yeah. you actually feel the obstacles, it's the, Rumble the Pack. terrain, the other vehicles, and especially the weapons. You know, I'm over 300 pounds, but it shook me. We know you've got the inside tips, Daryl. That's all we want. What about the turn? Actual monkey. All right, all right, all right. When you hit a turbo, let the boost fizzle out before you press the A Oh, wait, I can add to this. Hang a, on. You'll cut off any boost you have going. And the power-ups? When you collect three balloons of the same color, one right after another, you get a totally powered-up item. Say. And you can also use the zippers and spinning bananas to increase your speed. It's really Don't funny. Don't forget the hovercraft. <sighs> when you're heading into a sharp turn, use the R button. Okay. This will make the hovercraft hop. Then it's easier for you to make those turns. Something about an overworld. When you're exploring, you know they the say overworld, comedy comes in threes, chat. Really? You can find them by using all the different vehicles, okay? You people are vultures. Uh, a little help? Oh shit! Thanks, Daryl. That's four. But let's not forget the four-player capability. Player capability. That's it for our Diddy Kong expose. We leave you with one final thought. There is only one way to experience the adventure for yourself. Diddy Kong Racing will be on sale November 24th. Or you can check it out right now at your participating video store or retailer. At McDonald's. But remember, please drive safely. This has been Hot Topic. Here's what's coming up next. Check out the slam bangerific and oh, stiff titles for the holidays. Three seconds of Zelda 64, please. Oh, Extreme G, I had that. That was good. I like that one. Yeah, this is the drum and bass music I was expecting. Little wonder, you little wonder. Wave Race was good. That was, I think, out already by now. Goldeneye might have been out. I don't know. Getting. Oh, no, that was 97, so it might not have been out. Oh, why do they have to do the flashing? Didgeridoos go hard. Yeah, they, they really fucking do. That one was out already. It's actually kind of a cool track. Mischief Makers. Underrated. Rassel. Turok. Love Turok so much. I have streams of Turok if you want to hear my full Turok opinions. No Zelda, sorry. That was, um... That was kind of fun. I I kind of like the, the, like, completely out of time just nature of the tape. Like, like what year is it? It's, like, all kitschy and everything's, like, bright and strange and colorful and then just a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> One's on a, on a jetpack. As always, it would be nice to have more footage of the game itself, but I think, you know, it's it's funny. It's pretty memorable. And uh, the editing wasn't as terrible by any means. This next one is N64 Sports. I don't really think I want to watch very much of this one, chat. Uh, let's let's see, because I don't I definitely role playing games, it's titles that it had. N64 introduces three new it says if an I have any ego to crush, any pride to trample, or any spirit to break, it never hurts to practice. We'll check out some of it. Just curious to see the overall vibe of it. Uh 1080 was good. I like that one. Yeah, sports! Do you like sports? Yeah, balls! Yeah, 
Fight! Listen up, sports fans. Time Spike! To strap fight! In and turn Spike! The page, fall! Fall! This is a preview fall. of the season's most epic sports experience. Epic sports. Warning, this is no TV show. This is money. Yeah. Only players need apply. Player! Check this out. You ready to pack it with Kobe Bryant? Slide your fastball past Junior. Rip yeah. some big air in the half pipe. Yeah. Or maybe you're ready to go head to head with one, two, or three Get of hit. your best friends. Yeah. Well, all right. Show us your mad skills. But this is big time. You better represent. You got it going on. <laughs> oh my God. Step into Nintendo Sports. Only on N64. <laughs> oh my God. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Major League Baseball, featuring Ken Griffey Jr. And what a game this is! It doesn't look like they're doing any skits here. Edgar at the plate. Which now I'm missing the skits. Swung on and hit to deep left center field. Buford's got his sights on the target. Here I was complaining about like I want more gameplay, but now this is too much gameplay. And Edgar's on with a stand-up double. 0-0 zero, zero here at Fenway, and you can feel the tension as Junior steps to the plate. Junior on deck. Hudson looks for the sign and the pitch. Swing in the mix. Best. Now all the pros know, if you want to play large, you got to play with the best. It seems like they showed the most amount of sport game you footage. You have the gear, and nobody's got better goods than N64. Like, N64's from all the tapes. innovative game controller put the funk in functional. Its hypersensitive analog control stick follows every move you make. Real moves, real time. You are in the game. Notice the four ports right in front? That's right. That's right. One system, four players. Ports no can be spelled with one extra S and it and becomes Nintendo's exclusive ports. Mobile pack truly kicks. Your butt if you plant. Your opponent if you jam. This is N64 at the extreme. Nintendo's brand new 1080 snowboarding. 1080. 1080 snowboarding was crafted by the same twisted geniuses who brought us wave race. Oh my god. Did and this tape it, do it first? Again, from the twisted mind delivered. of Tim Burton? Attention, attention. Laws of physics do apply here. Twisted geniuses. Crazy fluff, shredding on ice or planting your face in the banks. It takes some wicked skills to balance each character's center of gravity. Whoa, now that's just sick. As quick as you can say compound fracture, you'll find yourself jibing down <laughs> acres of radical incline. This is where you find out what you're really made of. Maxed out on solo stunts, take on all comers in the two-player versus mode. Whether you two can do some cunning stunts. Dragger, or a rookie who's never even seen a snowflake, let alone some fat pow. 1080 snowboarding will grab you by the say? shorts with the most realistic, most adrenaline pumping, fear inducing snowboarding adventure ever. It's here this April, only on Nintendo Sports. Only on Nintendo Sports. Ready for more? Welcome to Kobe Bryant in NBA Courtside. Rip. You're in the pros now, baby. This game takes its name seriously. Now you can get as close to the action as you want to be. Maybe even Chat, closer. I totally misplaced when this Kobe was like massively famous. Moves, I thought it was the 2000s the and not the, the 90s. The real thing. Detailed 3D graphics and smooth, real-time, real-life play both? controls. From I thought he started in the 2000s. I don't really follow sports, though. Dunks. Go on, grab a controller and take it to the 96 rack. to 2016. To four gotcha. At once. Face off with your friends or join forces against the world's Please greatest welcome. players. Powerhouse titles you'll be aching to kick it with this season. Yeah, this is just all sport um, and no, no skits. And it's just a, a sizzle it's reel of sport. Here. It's only 10 minutes, it's so it's not like a Nintendo Sports massively long so video, real. but you, you get the idea. Let us move on to Banjo Kazooie tape. So I'm pretty sure I had this one too. I, I kind of remember the back of the tape in particular. Let's see if I even remember anything about it.
the BK tape is the same thing. Ah. Uh. First, there was Donkey and Diddy Kong. Then Diddy and Dixie, Dixie Wait. and Kitty, Mario and Yoshi. Is it? Okay, okay, you get the John Lovitz. So what's the big deal? Well, listen up, because there's a new dynamic duo from the creators of Donkey Kong Country and Goldeneye that's ready to kick some serious excitement it is. into Nintendo 64. It's Banjo Kazooie, it the stinks. coolest headbanging, beak busting, sky flying, rock hop, and egg shooting tag team and duo in a new game with so many thrills, chills, spells, and splats, you won't be able to put it down. <laughs> so what's the story? Hey Here's man, a paycheck's deal. paycheck. Tootie, Banjo's little sister, has been kidnapped by the very ugly and evil witch Granilda, <laughs> who has snatched Tootie because she's just too beautiful. Seems Witchy Poo's got this plan to suck the beauty out of Tootie with this super duper wart smoothing thingamajig and transfer it to herself. Wart smoothing. Yeah, right. Anyhow, Banjo and Kazooie's mission is to travel through nine mysterious worlds within Gruntilda's lair, uncover secret moves, battle evil, and collect puzzle pieces and a whole bunch of other things that will help you help them bring duty home. Puzzled? See, each world has ten puzzle pieces hidden somewhere within it. These puzzle pieces jealous jigsaw puzzles hanging around Gruntilda's lair. Once you insert the pieces into a particular jigsaw, then and only then can you advance to another world. Also, Pretty no easy, skits, huh? nothing oh, filmed for this one. It. Luckily, in their battle, so boy, I really got my wish. Help from a number of different characters, like Mumbo Jumbo, whose magical powers can turn Banjo and Kazooie they into peaked all with Star Fox. <laughs> that help them do things and go places they couldn't before. Then there's bottles. The that said, this having John Lovitz and a game like this learn new moves and get out of also trouble. good plus there's all kinds of collectible different kind of like good music notes collect enough of these and you can move freely around Gruntilda's lair or Jinjo's find five of these cute little whatevers in each world and you get a puzzle piece he doesn't know what Don't they are neither do we up on eggs for ammunition these will allow you to defeat and smelly eggs. eggs plus there are golden banjo statuettes good for a free life red feathers to help you fly golden feathers to make you invincible and honeycomb pieces help you store up energy. You'll need all these things and more where you're headed because Banjo and Kazooie are about to visit. Yeah, this is a great line world. read. Check it out. Bumbo's mountain. He's got like a good energy Bumbo for this. This is where it all begins with big busting egg tossing mumbo jumbo fun. But John Levitz is a legend anyway. I mean, the, the kids don't know. <laughs> if you want adventure, this is the place to find it. Plus, you'll learn all kinds of new moves. But he's great. He was, he was great. The critic, Rat Race, early SNL. Like, well, the SNL he was on, you know. Full of all sorts of monkey business, where one wrong move can it's also just a great you. character actor. Just show up in, in the, like, Treasure so many great gold. scenes in, like, 90s movies. Forget your beach towel, because this world is no place to get Simpson, a Seinfeld, yeah, yeah. Soon realize exploring Treasure Troll Cove. Again, dude was a legend. He's still around. He still is, but he was then too. Characters have come ashore. It's up to you to navigate through this world where the coast isn't always clear. And although it looks inviting, a swim here could be your last. Plankers Cavern. We are getting a deep dive into Banjo Kazooie chat. Certainly won't leave you with a false sense of hope when you enter Clanker's Cavern. This vile underworld is full of some really fishy characters that would love to get their jaws on you. So don't hold your breath, because you're about to encounter plenty of underwater challenges and razor-sharp obstacles that'll suck the air right out of you and leave you gasping for more. I wonder if this could be YouTube pooped. Or, or if it has at any point. Off before you enter this next world, because things begin to get a little slimy. Bubba Bloop Swamp is a dark, <laughs> smelly, and dangerous place where all the piranhas, poisonous swamp frogs, and crocodiles have a bone to pick with Banjo and Kazooie. I, I almost don't want to skip this tape, even if it's just gameplay. It'll take every bit of your imagination to get through this swamp, because everyone here has you on the menu. I don't think I'm gonna skip this one. I'm gonna leave this one. I mean, I'm here for the cheesy um, skits more than anything else. But yeah. One wrong step will send you into a lake so cold it will take your breath away. And if that's not bad enough, try dealing with a snowman with an ice cream headache. 
This place is no summer camp. Ice Cream Good Headache is a good Banjo band name. and Kazooie encounter here will send more than shivers up your spine. <laughs> Get numb just thinking about it. Chat, this has already been YouTube pooped, really? Well, it's out of the refrigerator and into the fire. Sorry, just one second. Gobi's Valley. This desert inferno is so hot, even Gobi himself is finding the heat too much to take. And this coming from a camel? First, there was Donkey and Diddy Kong. Then Diddy... It has been. Yeah, it has been. ...in this pressure cooker full of superheated sand and mummified... Dixie and Dixie, Dixie and Kitty, Mario and Yoshi. Okay, okay, you get the point. So what's the big deal? Well, listen up, because there's a new dynamic duo from the creators of Donkey Kong Country and GoldenEye that's ready to kick some serious excitement into Nintendo 64. It's Banjo Kazooie. It's Banjo Kazooie. Nothing to see, chat. It's Banjo Kazooie. It's Banjo Kazooie. It's Banjo Kazooie. It's Banjo Kazooie. <laughs> Oh, it's the nut check. Oh, fuck off. It took me too long. For the next mirage you see, maybe your last. As on Silva Gunna. Night has fallen permanently around the creepiest house in existence. Gunna. This place will definitely bring back the nightmares. Well, it's Silva going to. As you match wits with a whole house full of ghosts, skeletons, bats, and worse. You're bound to bump into some creepy characters as Banjo and Kazooie move around this haunted house where goosebumps will be the least of your problems. Rusty Bucket! That Ray. one's actually on Silva Gunner chat, not Their Siva Gunner. They'll find themselves aboard the HMS Gruntilda, and there'll be no mistaking this ship for the love boat in Rusty Bucket Bay. Sounds like Final Fantasy VII music. To have something against you. And if you're not careful, you'll definitely go down with the ship. Be on your guard as you explore this old derelict. From the funnels up on deck to the crates in the cargo hold. Because you may meet a fate much worse. I wonder if um, the bank. they told him to do this voice or he was just getting Let's into the spirit of it. Wood. If you think it's almost over, guess again. Because even if you make it through Click Clock Wood, the most challenging world of all, you'll go on to meet the wicked, warty wench of the West. And that's no bull. Man, there's so many different ways to talk about Gruntilda. Because you'll definitely meet up Infinite. with some nutty characters and familiar faces as you prepare for your final confrontation with Gruntilda. Oh, wait a minute. That noise isn't in the game, is it? Okay. Okay, what so about I this one? You're beginning to get the picture. It's all about helping Banjo and Kazooie get from one world to the other. Why did they like the clues and characters, finding all the Why did they put a diseased fart in the promo sister. video? Not that I don't think you're up to the challenge, but here's a few quick tips you might find useful as you explore each world. First, be sure to write down everything Brentilda says because you will need it to answer questions as you move through the game. <laughs> Plus, each time you play the game, the answers may write be down everything. So listen up no. and take notes. Second, find Cheeto the spell book in Gruntilda's lair. Cheeto gives you codes for red and gold feathers and That's blue right. eggs. That's right. Don Cheeto gives, gives you codes. To bubble gloop swamp. Finally, use your gold feathers to defeat the ghostly ghouls in Mad Monster Mansion instead of just trying to avoid them. These ought to help you out some on your quest to rescue. Man, I, I wish face -face I could see John Lovitz play this game. Because there's no pair better suited than Banjo and Kazooie to kick Gruntilda's warty butt. Ew. They may not be the Caped Crusaders, but they're twice the fun. So what are you waiting for? The bat sign? Banjo Kazooie. That's the name to remember. The best new game since Donkey teamed up with Diddy. Coming June 29th, only from Nintendo and Rare. Okay, we get a sizzle Rated reel now. now. At any blockbuster video. Oh shit. Don't delay, or you might be the one left standing there with egg on your face. I kind of feel like they showed too much of the game. Also coming for Nintendo 64. God, those frame rates. Um, yeah, I don't know, Chad. I feel like it's a good promo, but now I'm like almost man, just I don't know what I feel anymore. There was too much skit, now there's too much game, I don't know. 
Someone in chat said, why even show these promos? It's just showing all the game. I mean, you still get to play the game. Hey, they showed more Zelda that time, at least. Oh, fuck. Chat. Twelve Tales, before Conker started drinking beer. And, and smoking the weed. But no, I, I'm pretty sure there's a chance I had this tape. I'm almost positive I had it. Probably only watched it once. But even seeing that much of the game... Get head or get out. Get head or get out. Um, even seeing that much of the game, you still should play it. Because it's a good game. So yeah, I mean, the, the tape was good. John Lovitz was great. If I had to rank these tapes so far, I'm going to still say the Star Fox one was the best. Uh, Diddy Kong Racing, bonus points for good production. And the N64 one was, was funny. This one is N64 Hot... Oh, oh, sorry, Hot News 64 from 1999. I don't think I had this one. Welcome, you lucky, lucky game freaks. Oh. I'm Steve Sobel, and this is a very special edition of Nintendo's Hot News 64. The all-you-can-eat Let's see how far the culture came news on in the five years. Game system in history, and I guess I must be talking about N64. Right on. Well, music right on. is different. The presentations now, like talk soup. Just keeps getting so that's bigger different. And better and more amazing. While the other guys are going like, "Hey Nintendo, hey, can I be like you? Wait, that's hey, not... let me catch up. You want to go get a soda oh my or God. something?" Sorry guys. That's not really. Always got PlayStation was doing fine. Keep watching and you're going to get an insider look at the stealth game of the year. The outrageous new sci-fi adventure, Jet Force Gemini. Stealth You'll game of the year? You'll get an inside peek into the brain-shattering 3D world Wait, of Donkey Kong. Like stealth game of the year? Like Metal Gear Solid stealth? Or stealth game of the year? Like it's like going to sneak up on you and be amazing. If this was 99, the PS1 had already outsold it. So they did. he does the Tucker voice. That's amazing. 64. Dude, what are you talking about? And you're going to get an in-your-face preview of more incredible new N64 titles than you can stuff into the pockets of those cargo pants you've been wearing for the last four days. But first, <laughs> you're probably dying to point out to me, <laughs> dude, if you like the outside of the tape, like totally promised like hot tips and cool codes, like what up with that, Steve? Well, I'm here to provide. This dude Direct is just from his hit column at Nintendo.com is Mr. Insider. Everything himself, is a bit. Ask Dan. Dan's image has been digitally altered to protect his secret identity. Everything's a bit. Oh wait, it's kind of like me, I guess. Well, thanks, Steve. For Why is this guy make bit? Let's go to the emails. An N64 player who's currently watching this program writes. This guy's is it secret. True that you're going to make an exception to your normal rule and give out codes on this videotape. And how can I find the Triforce? <laughs> the Triforce. Find Link 1. <laughs> well, Link 1, if you're the Link that Dan thinks you are, Link you should one. know better than to ask. But here's a hot tip for the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Ocarina. As an adult, return to the Lost Woods with the Bagoron Sword equipped. Destroy the Lone Skull Kid with the Bagoron Sword, and you're going to get a giant rupee worth 500 rupees. To buy you what? You can do that over and over again as many times as you want. But I'm not going to be doing it, because that's the last time Dan's giving out any more codes. Unless I decide to give one for Star Wars Racer later in the videotape. Ooh, I guess that's what's known as a teaser. Okay, they're brave. They're buff. One of them barks. And they're out for justice. The bidometer is this so high. This galactic sci-fi adventure through mounds of disgusting aliens is a kaleidoscope of action, lighting, and special effects. And it is from Rare. That's right, Rare. The same guys that brought you GoldenEye, Game of the Year in 97, and Banjo-Kazooie, Action Game of the Year in 98. So strap in, oh. get in, and get funky as hot news. The same guys that brought you GoldenEye, Game of the Year in 97, and Banjo-Kazooie, Action Game of the Year in 98. So strap
Game of the year in 98. Woohoo! So strap in, get in, and get funky as Hot News 64 takes you deep inside the splatter be splattered baddest bugs in the universe. Science fiction action game of the century. You guys want to see this? Well, here it is. The bugs are coming, Whoa. and it's not in peace. Jet Force Gemini. Is, did he blink once? Or did he just put the coke under his eyelids? Allegedly. Oh, look, hell divers. Oh, oh my god, this is original hell divers. Didn't this get um, better frame rates in its N64 um, Switch? Yeah, I gotta check that out at some point. Even if it's just for a little bit. Because I did not like this game. My friend loved it, I played it a little bit, and it just did not click for me at all. I didn't own it, but you know, I played his copy. And I know that people love this fucking game and have so much nostalgia for it. But this is like... For me, Jet Force Gemini was like... Um, a cool concept I liked a lot about it and I was like a massive rare fan from the Super Nintendo to the N64 because how could you not be if you own those systems like they're they were making the best games pretty much and then um yeah I was looking forward to this one a little bit and I just kind of was like yeah I'm good I don't know if it was the frame rates that bothered me even then but I noticed frame rates and I remember magazines and uh websites calling out bad frame rates, and Turok 2 being uh, a particularly egregious example. But it doesn't look too... Okay, it looks kind of bad. Is that stirring? I'm so stirred, I'm bug chowder. <sighs> All right. We just saw a fraction of the more than two hours of cinematics in Jet Force Gemini. The controls suck, visually, too. The game has got it going on. Did they? Hey, I don't know. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Steve, what about the play action, Steve? Play action. Well, sitting with me behind the virtual news desk is Travis Williams, our Jet Force Gemini inside expert from Team Nintendo. Welcome, Trav. Proud to be here, Steve. And we're proud to have you here. Now, what makes Gemini such an original? Talk to us, Trav. Take us inside. Well, Jet Force Gemini is a game that follows in the footsteps of the very best that the N64 has to offer. Games like GoldenEye, games like Turok the Dinosaur Hunter. It has a terrific near first person perspective that really serves to pull you into the game. And with 120 stages, you're going to be there a while. Wow. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'd like to see some more. You want to see some more? Oh, definitely. Are you sure? Definitely. Are you sure? Woohoo! Woohoo! Woohoo, indeed. Let's see. <laughs> Okay, Steve, I've got it one word. It just feels awkward. Graphics. Check it out. I mean, nobody's ever seen bosses like this before. Now that is amazing. Ooh, ouch. Now, ooh, that what does this hurt. music remind me of? You can really see the mega hours that have gone into the amazing da, 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 lighting da. effects. What is that? Dynamic reflections. An incredible 3D universe just exploding all around you. Ugh, gross. <laughs> this Hell, is hell divers. Lupus. He's a big leaper. This is Juno. Oof. Now you see this? You've got two shooting modes, running and targeting. Watch what happens here. Your character goes transparent, so your point of view basically turns into first person. Ugh. This kind of action, you're really gonna need it. I think that's what got me. Like a game like this, this with the dual a analog, like if this got game. just a, an update with dual analog, Floyd, the robot you I would weapons. probably be more interested. Also got some classic four battle modes. Hey, that looks really cool. Same for Shadows of the Empire, too. A ton of levels. But you know, it came out when it came out, and they were figuring line. shit out like this. This is one extremely rewarding game to play. In fact, Steve, it's heroic. Two shitting modes. I, you, you can do more than two shitting modes if you know how to this game squat is rated properly. T for team. Well, don't just lie there snacking in a beanbag chair. Go out to your Bean. favorite retailer right now and reserve your own copy of Jet Force Gemini. Wait, not this second. 
first, you want to see Ask Dan give out another freebie. Don't Wait, you? just pause the tape and go. Okay, but this no. is the last time, and you're gonna see why. What did Dan do that he's on the run from the law? Dork writes, "Dear Dan, please give me all the codes please. Ebar made for every game there." De dear Dan, please give me all the codes ever made for every game there ever was, and bring all of them to my house as I am grounded. P.S. Your evil. Game Boy Bob. There ever was. And bring them all to my house as I'm grounded. P.S. Your evil. That's from Game Boy Bob. Evil. Well, Bob, just despite you, Dan's going to give everyone else but you this insider tip for Mario Golf. It teaches all players, except Bob, how to access a hidden character. Are you where, Bob? To earn the right to play as Metal Mario, players must win a birdie badge on every hole on every course in tournament mode. Now, there's a little incentive for you. Okay, that's really all. No more tips. Especially not until Bob oh. has to use spell check. Unless I change my mind and give one more for Racer in a few minutes. Well, he's oh. Ask Dan, but he's not Please, always Dan. Answer Dan. Give us but then the again, bounty. He's evil. Okay, he's big. Oh. He's bad. He's back. And he's still wearing that tie. <sighs> Can you say full on 3D adventure spectacular? It's amazing how say, rare focused expansion these pack, tapes were. Mind blowing graphics, another future game of the year from Rare. How about just Kremlings? Looking bad for you. They, guys. Seriously, I mean, they were like me. as you're you're out important as Nintendo's first party developers at this uh, point in time. Just about. I feel like they were just a step behind. It, maybe. But it was like a celebration. Whenever a new Rare game was announced or came out, it was as big as like a new, almost as big as like a new Nintendo IP. And then it went horribly wrong somewhere. I still am of the opinion that Nintendo selling Rare or Microsoft scooping them up, Nintendo knew something was wrong. <laughs> Otherwise, they wouldn't have done it, but there was a time when there was just this, like, silent period where no one was saying anything, and it was just speculation that Nintendo sold them. And I, I sent an email to Rare <laughs> about how upset I was. <laughs> like, I'm not buying an Xbox to play your games, Rare. I have a GameCube. And I'm not buying an Xbox to play your video games. Please release your games on the GameCube. Oh, it, it worked. It worked. We got Star Fox Adventures. I totally need an worked. Expansion pack for my brain. Yeah, you do. Okay. They didn't reply. This is Brian Hartman, our Donkey Kong 64 insider from Team Nintendo. Welcome, Brian. I have to it's take her home. A busy head is conscience later. Oh, wait. Uh, He's party animal. He is there. a party animal. Say, uh, banana? No, I have my fill. Yeah, I'll just, I'll keep it here. Yeah, okay, good. Now, besides the astounding graphics, what gives DK64 its special magic? Well, Donkey Kong 64 is the first game that has expansion pack only. Uh, that'll be packed in with the game. It's got 200 objectives, over 100 different moves, and he brought four friends along, so it's gonna be huge. Wow, so it's the same old Someone DK just called him 90s man. Wow, cool. He does, man. he does look like 90s more? man. Absolutely. So would I. You know, Do I memories. You know, yeah, oh memories. god, yeah. Do me a favor, go woo, woo, woo. Ooh, indeed. Let's see some more. He looks like Scott Weiland, which so is why I just Donkey did that, yeah. Pal Diddy are back, and they brought some new friends. Tiny, Lanky, and Chunky. In each one of the enormous worlds, there are areas that I have my problems with this game. Access. So you have to backtrack to open up new play areas, and you have to use their special that said, abilities to collect keys and open new Some of you may doors. have seen... Cool. I, I found a guide that I made for all the minigames. And there are about a hundred in, in the 90s. Here's Lanky with a cool one. There are five goals the for 2000, each whatever it was. Each of the eight worlds. That's over 200 goals, Steve. Wow. And sometimes you can even change forms to meet your next goal. So you could say I was a pretty big fan of this game. There's also tons of mini games within the game for up to four players. This was the original Final Fantasy VII Rebirth chat. That's I how many mean, fucking mini games were in this. Races, barrel blasting. <laughs> Car racing, more fun than a barrel of splooge well, diving. You know the saying. And then, how can I rave enough about the expansion pack's effect on the amazing 3D graphics from Rare? 
You have incredible real-time lighting effects, massive environments, outrageous bosses, just a whole texture quality yeah, I mean, and volume that we've never seen. It on was the pretty NCAA crazy. Board. It was almost well too much. It was too much. A staggering level of gameplay. Steve, this is just one giant. There is now a patch a that apparently works say, where you could just switch DK Kongs 64. on the fly. And that, you know, one day I wouldn't mind revisiting it with that. This wasn't enough. Get this. The Donkey Kong Country TV show is coming to the Fox Family Channel. You heard me. I said DK. Coconut cream pie chat. You want more? Okay. Here's a little insider insight from Paramount Home Video. A little drum music, if you please. <laughs> Get ready for the hippest tape of them all. Look out, you beauties. Here it comes. It's another Donkey Sunday stream Kong. favorite. Donkey Kong Country, Legend of the Crystal Coconut. It's the first feature-length 3D animated adventure based on the enormously popular Nintendo game that took an entire generation by storm. This is no wimpy fairy tale. It's a search for the truth. A battle between good and evil. So get ready. You'll go bananas for Donkey Kong Country. And Legend the music. The is that the Nickelodeon the font? Video cassette from it's the Nickelodeon video. typeface. Yes, yes, yes. All right, okay. Yeah, Donkey Coke. Kong 64, the game, is rated yes. E for yes. everybody. It yes. is your favorite Nintendo retail hangout on November oh! 24th. But there's big news happening right now, so get on down there. Go, okay, okay. I mean, wait, not yet. Wow. Okay. Ask Dan. Last chance to be Steve's friend. You want to be Steve's friend, don't you? Okay. Give it up. Racer. 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 All right. <laughs> it when you bet. Racist. This basically will allow you to take <laughs> all of the variables of Star Wars Episode One Racer. <laughs> now pay attention. <laughs> now you're going to have invincibility. Oh. You're going to be able I to. I swear to God, that Halo mod like broke level, my brain. Edit Pod Racer statistics. Are you satisfied? Thanks, Ask Dan. I thought he was going to say, thanks, thanks asshole. FBI witness protection program. We're all rooting for you. Now, remember, you can check out Nintendo's CodeBank website if you want more cool codes. And Dan can be reached at Nintendo.com, a great place to find out all the news about everything Nintendo. I wonder if, okay, like, Dan still works that's there. That's it for this special edition of Nintendo. I need some hot, hot tips. News 64. Donkey Kong 64 stomps into town this November 24th. Jet Force Gemini splats into your favorite store on October 13th. And we'll see you next time. But I'm going to leave you with a preview of some of the incredible new oh, games shit. coming from Nintendo. And Another bonus reel. Play. Roll it, fellas. Wait, does this include additional footage of, like, commercials? That Mario looks so non-standard. From original Mario Golf. Starcraft 64. Yeah. It's surprising how much of modern direct you can see in the presentations of some of these, especially the stingers. I agree, yeah. Some fairly disappointing games in here, and some hidden gems. This included hidden gem. Nuclear Strike. I never played that. Never played Revolt, but yeah. Get in or get out. Okay, now you can go to the store. Go. Come on, go to the store. I'm going. I'll see you there. All right, Ferris Bueller. Wow. So that was, I think, the longest tape yet at 18 minutes. Uh, well, it's not 18 minutes. It's like, you know, subtracting the beginning. It's like 17 minutes. Um, and that was from 1999. Then the next year, they put out their shortest VHS tape with Majorpo's Borpo. And this is the last one that I have for you. But there will be a couple bonus things. But yeah. Banjo Tooie sneak peek included. I didn't have this one. So I don't even think I've ever seen this.
The audio track on this VHS is a rather annoying defect, starting about 30 seconds in. Huh. Oh, that sucks. I guess we'll see how annoying the defect is, but All it's only... Nintendo video games are rated by the Entertainment Software Ratings Board. It's only like five minutes. one of the following age-appropriate ratings. For additional information on game ratings, visit the ESRB at ESRB.com. Are we zoomed in? Uh, not really, no. Want some great entertainment this holiday? Head on down to Toys R Us. While you're there, you can check out the great new games coming from Nintendo. The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask for the N64 is coming October Really 26th. good, Matt. There. Some consider it a sequel to the greatest video game ever. Accurate and Others good graphics. Others claim that it's much better than the original. Let's talk with the experts at Nintendo. Being a sequel to the best video game of all time wouldn't be a bad thing with itself. But at the same time, Roll, Reggie. The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask is much more than a sequel. In fact, you could label it as a sequel, but then you'd have to take everything you know about sequels and throw it out the window. When you first start the game, you're riding through a forest on horseback. What is this cricket you, music? You come across a skull kid, your horse rears up, and you fall off. And when you're knocked out, the kid actually comes up and takes your ocarina. And he also steals your horse. And that's kind of what starts it off. That's the audio it's defect? Two hours to save the Earth. Link has to unravel the mystery of Majora's Mask within 72 hours. I thought that was just an annoying instrument. The earth. And if you can't solve the mystery within 72 hours, game over. There's 24 different masks in this game. If you take the Goron mask and you put it on, then you have the ability to turn into a Goron. You actually see him go through a transformation. Uh, and then he's a Goron, and you're able to do things you weren't normally able to do. Hey, who are you calling a Goron? A Goron? And that's the only way to cross some parts of the game. If you get a Zora mask, instead of just kind of swimming on top of the water, you can actually put the Zora mask on, and you have the ability to walk underwater. Uh, you can swim extremely What a weird audio water. glitch that only affects so one instrument of this song bunch to do under the water. There's, there's entire levels that take place underwater. And the only way you can get it was a Zora mask. And it's really, it's pretty graceful to watch him you know, kind of skim over the surface of the water. One of the things that makes the game really cool is that the whole time the clock is ticking. The moon is getting closer and you're not going to stop any of that. Closure. You have so many things that you have to accomplish to stop this moon from falling. If you mess up even the least little bit on a couple of these things. So this is the driest tape? The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask requires the expansion pack to work. This game uses the expansion pack in a way that a lot of games haven't really used it yet. The bosses. Oh yeah, and, and the ear. A higher polygon. The ear fuckery uh, is one not boss great. In particular, the jungle boss, one of the first bosses you fight. If you oh start beating God. him, then he calls six bugs to his rescue, and so you have that many more things on the screen. We hit him a couple more times, then he releases about 300 butterflies into the ear that will attack you. It's, it's really incredible to see all that on screen. Everybody's going to love this game. 300 Miyamoto is known for redefining the way games are supposed to be played. Well, he's the guru. Exception. Wait, didn't Aonuma Zelda handle this one? Your link in the world is waiting on you. Reserve your copy now at Toys R Us with a $10 deposit, and you'll be guaranteed to get a Genius Miyamoto strikes again. With this unique 3D label. If he did Ocarina, though, Miyamoto, yeah. You'll also get $10 off this Toys R Us exclusive. Tommy Tellerico did this one. Regularly priced at $29.99, now just $19.99 with this offer. Think that's it? Think again. Check out the uh -huh. sequel to the platinum uh -huh. bestseller Banjo Kazooie. Uh -huh. It's Banjo Tooie for the N64, uh -huh. coming November 21st. It's an extension of an already great game. What is it, Armand? First off, you're given all of the old moves that you had before, and being Banjo Tooie, there's going to be more moves. Yeah, I, I, some of you know my issues with Banjo Tooie. One of the coolest new team moves they have is a level where Banjo Armand is still like has been here all throughout, and chat. And it goes immediately into first person right. view, and it's been like six years, and Armand is still around. In the first game, you could shoot blue eggs. Uh, and two, you have all these different color eggs. The, the humor is definitely carrying over uh, from the first game. That's not the great mighty Pooh. Banjo 2 has definitely given me everything that I've ever expected. That's it.
Wow. That that is yeah, that's a terrible one, man. All right, you know what? I'm not going to say it's terrible because it did give you gameplay footage of two upcoming games. You got a lot of Majora footage uh, with cricket noises. You got uh, some footage of Banjo Tooie, but yeah, no skits, just some talking. And like, I'm good with that because you know you want you want the the game. That's the star of the show here. But for my purposes today. I'm all about the skits. So my rankings still stand. Star Fox 64 had the best one. Then I'm going to say Diddy Kong Racing at number two. Then, I don't know. Yeah, I think probably. No, not the sport one. John Lovitz is good to hear. I mean, I'm glad that he was there. I, I like that one just for John Lovitz, but uh, change the system was just crazy. Just made me laugh. So, yeah, it was, it, I mean, there's a couple of okay ones, but the one that we didn't do that I think is actually maybe the best, if you want to see the full version of this, watch the very first Commercial Chaos. This is the Donkey Kong Country one. And this one, I'm pretty sure I had. But I don't know. I know I've seen the tape on YouTube a, a couple times at least. So if you want like a full reaction to it. This is from 1994. And it's like, whoa, and it blows your mind. It's all the shading and stuff. It's really well shaded. Everything looks so rounded. And you're really going to think that it's a game that's a generation ahead of its time. Yeah, it's brilliant. Last second timing stuff in there where you have to jump real quick. Yeah. I think yeah. a lot of people are going to be surprised at the kind of uh, game that Donkey Kong Country yeah. is. And then there's there's Pearl Jam guy again. And there's the editing again. There's the rock the rock music. We just went all the way back to the past to play a good game. Here we are today on our way to Redmond, Washington to take an exclusive insider's look at Nintendo's new revolutionary yet unreleased game, Donkey Kong Country. Where do they get a load of us? <laughs> Guys, we yeah. finally made it. Nintendo of America, the fortress. Let's find out what Donkey Kong Country is all about. Let's go inside. Well, Let's that, like, do it. A flannel vest. Hey, it's Ken. Ken Lobb, development I manager. I think I need one of those. Donkey Kong Country, how you doing? Ken, what is the deal with this here? Yeah, we get a lot of letters, and they like to put pretty pictures on the front of the envelope, so we'll, like, uh, stick it on the wall, you know? So, uh, Ken. You want, you want a banana? I wonder where uh, that is now. No, thanks. Ken, I want in on this Donkey Kong Country thing. I want in. I want on the inside. I don't know. Can me and you, pal, we go back a long way? Come on. What do you think? Mm. Old time's sake? Okay, I'll take you to the treehouse. The treehouse? God, I hope there's no climb. Treehouse existed. Oh, God, here it is. What's the password? Diddy. Password? Diddy? Yeah! <laughs> yeah. You know, after about a thousand ditties, we finally get into the treehouse. We're gonna say hello to Tony Harmon. He is the product development manager here at Nintendo. Tony, how you doing? You're pretty good. Tony. Welcome to the treehouse. Thank you very much. Do you want a banana? I want, know, uh, I want to know the story behind the game. Are you here to talk about the story? I'm the wrong guy. We need to get Dan here. This is Dan Oh, Dan. What's up? Wait, how is that you? the Dan? Good. good, Dan. I want to know something about this story. Basically, we uh, had a chance to kind of create a new yeah, story. Yeah, reduce the frame rate. We gave yeah, the world to overexpose in, in red. Uh, Foremost among those, yeah. Diddy Kong, the little Kong wannabe monkey guy. Little Kong wannabe uh, monkey fella. Dude who follows Kong around, tries to yeah. be just like him. The story actually picks up with Diddy uh, sitting in the jungle guarding the banana horde. No sooner does the Kong country for a living, we have hundreds of areas. So Kong yeah, the, the returning skit here is eat. is just banana. Out of fully rendered characters. Tim. I mean, but they're doing like little I animations. As to how you made them look so real. Because we're based in Twycross, we have uh, a zoo about two miles away. Ah, uh, you went to the zoo. Oh, the zoo, yeah, and had a, a good look at the gorillas and the monkeys and with video cameras. It was pretty funny. Hey, big fella. Hey, there's Diddy. Diddy donkey. Oh, get out of the way, Diddy. How does it feel to be a prototype, fellas? Using uh, actually went to a zoo to, for the footage. Uh, to produce a, a three-dimensional. See, they're putting the effort in. Display on a computer screen. 
Look at that. So, oh, uh, man, that's succulent what do you have to eat here? Well, character we model. the cream of banana soup, the banana and peanut butter sandwich. Hey, well, your name is uh, George... Uh... George Zachary from Silicon Graphics. I was wondering if you could help me out a little bit in explaining the game. Sure, it's, uh, it's, it's a really cool game. It was created on this thing called the Challenge, which is this really advanced supercomputer. Basically, picture 20 supercomputers in a box. Now, with all this technology, am I going to have to buy an adapter for my home Nintendo? Not at all. In fact, uh, when the game was created on the Challenge, it was basically specially output to the Super Nintendo game system. So it basically... Then you actually texture map them, and you computer modeling. Yeah. Basically, what we wondered if maybe you could... Always hot tips. There's always hot tips. So now we get the hot tips. There's the, the treehouse fellas again. These are like legends. I'm sure the treehouse has venerated these people as legends, chat. At this point in time, like they probably have photos and like portraits of them on their walls at the treehouse. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, it's a pretty cool stage. Doesn't Bill Trinan show up? I think a young Bill Trinan shows up. I'm not 100% sure. We put this out. What do you think? What do you think your friends are gonna think about this game? Well, yeah. I don't think really you have to tell them all that much. Once they show the Bill, picture, yeah, they're just gonna be like, you have to have it. You know it. Get it. It's one of those games you don't get bored with. You yeah. know, I've played it probably a hundred times. I don't know where Bill now, is. And I'm still if he is here. Better. I'm still getting yeah. better in stages. There's certain stages really? I can improve on. Bill didn't work better. at Nintendo until Ocarina of Time. Chat, you lied to me. I tell you what, you better reserve this game before November 21st, because that's when it comes out in the stores. I already got mine. Dude's already got one. He said he's already got one! So yeah, you get everything here. 32 bits. You get skits. You get bananas. You get gameplay. You get crazy editing. You get rock music. This is like the, the prototype. This this set the, the, the stage, the tone for every proceeding VHS tape. I think I had this one. I'm pretty sure I had this one. Money suitcase guy was sitting at a table with a hat on. That's nice. Play it raw. Let's see what's in here. And you even get, like, a little fake ending, too. They really went hard on Killer Instinct. So, yeah, so that's the Nintendo stuff. I, I kind of feel like the Donkey Kong one would be my number two. Again, we didn't watch all of it. If you want to watch um, the whatever's missing, there's not much. I mean, we, we got the, you got the gist of it, but Commercial Chaos, I believe, number one has the full version of that. But, um... Dan asked Dan Osen is still working at Nintendo 30 years later. That's mental. But yeah, um, for me, still, Star Fox 64, number one, maybe this, number two, then Diddy Kong Racing, number three. But, you know, they were all pretty enjoyable in their own way. There is another tape that exists that I don't think I'm going to watch all of, but it's Squaresoft Final Fantasy VII Collector's Video, interviews from 1997. This seems, like, really dry compared to um, any of the Nintendo stuff, because this is purely just, like, interviews and information. But I kind of want to watch a little bit of it, and um, maybe we'll see if, you know, if there's something interesting in here. And uh, I might end up watching this on my own another time. But yeah, it's 20 minutes, and I want to move the Sunday stream right along. So we can always skip around. This is like the kind of shit they showed in the commercials. And I was like, hook, line, and sinker. Vinny, you really are that drawing of the Final Fantasy VII fan that your friend drew of you. I am the Final Fantasy VII Ratman gob Goblin. Goblin. When you have, like, quotes, like, it might be the best game ever made, and you show Cloud on a fucking motorcycle, and on a train, and, like, this stuff... I'm gonna go buy a PlayStation. 
and I did. New graphics. Yeah, they're going, like, heavy into spoilers, too. There's a scene coming up that I find very funny. That I thought was, like, the most cool shit ever. <laughs> this... The, the cloud climb animation. <laughs> also, you have the most incredible soundtrack. What is this music? It's not terrible, it's just not... Yeah, it's just not the game soundtrack. ...of 95, one of the U.S.'s largest CG Dubbed. conventions, SIGGRAPH, was held in L.A. At that time, we were not sure what the next generation RPG game should look like. So, as an experiment, we created a CG-based, game-like, interactive demo to present at the show. It focused on battle scenes that were 100% real-time and polygon-based. Man. This became the seed of Final Fantasy VII, and it was then that we decided to make this a CG-based game. Based. When we discussed designing the field scenes as illustration or CG based, we came up with the idea to eliminate the connection between the movies and the fields. Without using blackout at all and maintaining the quality at the same time, we would make the movie stop at one cut. And okay, there, the there it is, there's the animation. <laughs> we tried to make it control oh during movies. As a result of using a lot of motion data plus CG effects in still images, it turned out to be a mega capacity game. Why are they in an interrogation room? We had to choose the CD ROM I don't know. as our media. In other words, because cool? we became too aggressive and got ourselves into trouble. They got into trouble, chat. So yeah, it's just, people, just interviews and, and spoilers. To get emotionally involved with both. Oh God! Wow, it's either like pure dark or like the most blinding light. Between ordinary scenes and special effects scenes, and they were arranged in a certain order. The players would accept that as an established style and take for granted characters going through monotonous map scenes and then special effects being used in highlight scenes. They understood yeah. it as the grammar of the games. Yeah, no, it, it, they're... RPGs. The thing is about Final Fantasy VII Original, yeah, there's Popeye arms. There, there's a charm to them. They look like poop a little bit, but we don't care. Because, yeah, you do, you, like, once it establishes the language of the game... It's it's fine. You just you just go through it and you're fine. At least I did. Working with him since Final Fantasy V. When he joined Square, he told me he initially wanted to become a film director, but that he thought this would be impossible in Japan. The previous I'll make a video game. Final Fantasy could be called puppet shows compared to this one. It's a real film requiring innovative effects and various camera angles. And that is something actually that is extremely innovative. Cinematography and making his own films has contributed films. a lot to the making of the game. He is the director of this game. This and Metal Gear Solid really established gaming as uh, as more than just Bing Bing Wahoo. Don't get me wrong; I think Bing Bing Wahoo is. Like, more important. Because I like a good, fun game. But I also like... I like games with a good story. I like games with good cinematics. I like both. You need Bing Bing Wahoo and, I think, some really nice cinematography. 
Oh yeah, these are very realistic faces. By the way, this game was fucking awesome. Bushido Blade. Yeah, they are, yeah, there it is! Pockets and... <laughs> I have to applaud the, the fucking ballsiness of making a fighting game where you could die in like one or two hits. Brave Fencer Musashi. I played that for the demo of what? Final Fantasy VIII, was it? Or was it seven? I think it was eight. It was good. Final Fantasy Tactics. I didn't play this. I still kick myself for not buying this game when I was younger. And I had a chance to. I know it's not too late. I just can't see myself right now digging into it. I hear it holds up, though. didn't buy it, blame yourself or God. I, I don't know, maybe I didn't have the money for it and I bought something else. Maybe the style didn't win me over, like Final Fantasy VII, which had swords and guns and motorcycles, but that's uh, a huge regret because Nine ended up being my favorite and this is more in line with that style. Massive, um, not a massive regret, but a, a, enough of a regret. Saga Frontier. I didn't. I didn't play this. I didn't quite know what it was. This is, I guess, just another massive PS1 RPG. Didn't you play Nine for the first time when you streamed it? No, no, no. I played Nine like the year it came out. And then several times before I streamed it, I, I completed it. Oh, no, no, I finished 9 for the first time when I streamed it. But I played through it and got, like, almost to the end a couple times. It's weird to think that I started streaming 10 years after Final Fantasy IX came out. It feels like ancient history. An evil empire is sucking the life force from the planet. Destroying all that's in its path. It's up to one soldier of fortune to save the world. If he succeeds, was this the commercial that that got me to buy a PS1? If he fails, you can always hit the reset button. Final Fantasy Seven. Okay, they're just including the commercials now. Beyond Bonus commercial chaos. Lies a story of ultimate conquest. A story of war and friendship. A story of a love that can never be. Hmm. And a hatred that always was. And now, the most anticipated... Just go ahead and throw that in the commercial. Of the year ...will never come to a theater near you. Final Fantasy VII. It did. Spoilers, it it, it, it it did, eventually. More than 200 animators and programmers. Which is like quaint at production. this time for a AAA. Over two years in the making, and a cast of thousands. They said it couldn't be done in a major motion picture. <laughs> they were right. Just two years, yeah. Remake and Rebirth are going on, what, nine years of development at this point? But the ads were incredible, and they totally won me over. And that was what I ended up doing. I ended up buying a PlayStation, and I bought Final Fantasy VII, and that was when I opened my heart to Sony. <laughs> Which, you know, in retrospect, it wasn't Sony. It was their hardware. I opened my heart to Kojima. That's what I'm trying to tell you. 
big mistake. Is Sony the dark part of Vinny's heart? Maybe. But anyway, that is just a number of promo tapes. I hope you enjoyed it. I figured this would make for a fun segment, something a little different, but yet similar enough to Commercial Chaos. And um, those were good. A lot of that stuff was was very nostalgic for me. And it also was um, stuff that, that actually was hard to look at, some of it. But it brought me back a little bit. And it was, um, if anything, it made me want to replay some games. So good job, tapes. We're going to take a break. And I will be back, chat, with Sonic Crust Pack. Here's a new BRB that cycles through images by Alizarin. So enjoy music while you look at images. <laughs> 